I guess I've had eight major heart surgeries during the course of my life. My dad had died of a heart attack, and so we knew that there was a genetic issue. In December of 2001, I was playing golf in Montecito, California, where I lived at the time. And one of the foursome was the head of surgery at UCLA. And as we walked off the 15th tee, he turned to me and he said, Michael, you know, I don't think you're going to live much longer. And that does capture one's attention. Michael Ray underwent transplant surgery in 2002, receiving the heart of a 27-year-old victim of a motorcycle accident. His life-saving operation was made possible by research done decades earlier at the Jackson Laboratory, a nonprofit genetics research institution in Bar Harbor, Maine. The Jackson Laboratory, which was founded in 1929, has contributed significantly to the understanding of biomedical problems. George Snell in 1980 won a Nobel Prize for understanding the basis of transplantation biology. Important discoveries at the Jackson Laboratory began long before Dr. Snell's Nobel Prize. As Snell himself pointed out in his Nobel acceptance lecture, the seminal work on transplant genetics was done even earlier by Dr. Clarence Cook Little, who later founded the Jackson Laboratory. Dr. Little was a scientist and a university president, but is better known in research circles for something else, for changing our understanding of cancer. Early in this century, cancer was thought to be caused by infection. Work at the Jackson Laboratory put in place the idea that genes were the fundamental cause of cancer. The laboratory has continued to build on Dr. Little's research to the present day, but it has made other significant discoveries as well. In 1953, the same year that Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA, Jackson scientist Leroy Stevens began working with an unusual form of cancer cells in mice. He observed that these cells act like those in early development that go on to form a variety of tissues, what we know today as stem cells. Stevens' research laid the groundwork for the new field of stem cell research that holds much promise for new disease therapies. And Elizabeth Russell, another Jackson scientist, achieved the first successful bone marrow transplants to cure disease in mice. Her discoveries in the 1960s, built on by others, have enabled thousands of patients to receive bone marrow transplants to treat various cancers and immune disorders. In the 1970s, Jackson scientist Doug Coleman discovered leptin, an enzyme that controls appetite and body weight, and is instrumental in obesity and type 2 diabetes. His research showed that genetic and biochemical factors, not just willpower and eating habits, are involved in obesity. That discovery opened the door to pharmaceutical treatments for obesity and earned Dr. Coleman three of science's top honors, the Lasker Award, the Shaw Prize, and the Gairdner Foundation Award. This legacy of discovery has placed the Jackson Laboratory among the most highly regarded research institutions in the world, with an impact far beyond its own walls. It is absolutely essential to realize the importance of the role of the Jackson Laboratory um, in, in the development of the past 50 years of medicine and what we know about basic science and basic molecular biology. I don't think we could have made, made the progress we made without an institution like the Jackson Laboratory. The Jackson Laboratory's award-winning work continues. Its research teams are working today to understand and solve some of our most vexing genetic diseases and conditions. Based on our fundamental expertise in cancer research, we are a National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. We also do tremendous work in neurosciences, in particular in Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, uh, motor disorders. We have a strong glaucoma research program, programs in osteoporosis and metabolic disorders, including diabetes and cardiovascular disorders as well. From cancer to transplants to stem cells, 
The lab's ever deeper understanding of genetic complexity will lead the search for tomorrow's cures. It's work that will save lives and improve the outlook for countless patients for generations to come. Thanks to the Jackson Lab, I'm alive. And so it's absolutely essential that, to me that it be successful and to continue to thrive as an organization.